Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yet another video at the packing shed. Yep. And that's exactly what it is. And uh, today I'm going to be, uh, I'm in pursuit of the um, ultimate kind of ultralight HF station. So I've got the uh, true SDX here, uh, as well as the uh, FX4CR. And I just bought this uh, this week, which is a, a Sota Beams Pico um, Ballon. One to one ballon comes in a kit, so there's a little bit of uh, a very simple construction to put it together. And um, I'm powering both of the radios with these uh, 3000 milliamp hour 3.7 volt uh, lithium ion 18650 rechargeable batteries. And uh, anyway, I'll tell you more about that in a, in a minute when I get myself comfortable, but uh, so before I sort of uh, got going. Last time I was out here, I uh, wanted to get the um, Sota Beams uh, Whisper Light, uh, Whisper Beacon, uh, up and running. It was too much like, hard work to me. Anyway, uh, so I've got the Whisper Light, got the uh, dipole uh, with the, the sort of bottom half sloping down to the handrail, short patch lead, uh, USB power bank, little battery keep alive. Uh, that um, keeps the uh, uh, the power bank uh, alive just by sort of putting a bit of current drain on it because otherwise it'll it'll cut out. And um, I just need to uh, press the little button on the side at the top of uh, an even minute, and um, well, the beginning of an even minute, shall I say? And then uh, we'll see uh, what we uh, what we can spot. Um, it's set to 200 milliwatts, which is the uh, uh, the most that it can put out and you set it with a, an Android uh, tablet or phone but unfortunately you can't get these anymore and then I'll come back to that after it's done a few transmission cycles and see where we got. So this dipole it's the uh, Sota Beams Pico Ballon uh, which you can uh, make into a 4 to 1 Ballon or, uh, or 1 to 1 and uh, there's uh, instructions are online on the Sota Beams website cost me about £7 plus postage uh, here in the UK um, I'm not going to put the link up they're easy to find. Um, I think you can probably get them from um, uh, DX Engineering uh, in the States as well, but uh, Sota Beam ship worldwide. And it's just fed with RG174. And um, in pursuit of the sort of the ultimate lightweight, ultralight sort of uh, HF station, um, I want a resonant, a resonant aerial um, so to sort of do away with the need for an ATU. So what I want to try and do, um, I've cut the legs at about 16 and a half foot, so a little bit too long really. I've got the analyzer. I'm going to lash this pole out here to uh, one of these posts and then uh, elevate the ends up as, as sort of far as I usually would. Um, I'm just going to um, use these chairs and tie the ends off to the chairs um, and uh, just sort of see what the SWR is and trim it a little bit. Um, so I'll sort of put it at a, a height that I would typically have it mounted at an in, in, inverted V configuration. Um, and then the long term plan is to uh, maybe add some links to that um, to make a, a small lightweight dipole, a link dipole. Rated at 10 watts, so um, I need to be careful not to exceed that with the FX4CR. But the true SDX, that I've never actually had any contacts on, so I might see if I can squeeze a contact out of that today. Is uh, will only go up to five watts SSB anyway, so okay. So uh, I've got it up uh, the dipole, I've got the ends tied off to uh, two upturned chairs. It's uh, the V is at sort of quite an acute angle, which is uh some of that I hadn't really sort of uh, thought about because generally when I'm using an inverted V dipole for uh, 20 meters it's uh, sort of part of a linked uh, dipole that, uh, that does 40 um, so uh, obviously it's uh, it's a bit more flat but anyway um, I turned folded the uh, both ends back about four inches 
uh, thereabouts. I, I didn't actually measure it, but uh, I measured them up against each other, so they're both the same. And at 14.2 megs, uh, SWR is uh, pretty much one-to-one. Uh, -one. So, uh, as you can hopefully see there, uh, I'll just take that down, and then uh, I shall come back and uh, plug into the uh, uh, plug into the uh, dipole here on the uh, on the mast. Okay, I should just say, by the way, that this um, this Pico Ballon uh, weighs 3.5 grams, uh, which is uh, pretty good. I mean, uh, I have used uh, just uh, dipoles before uh, with no ballon whatsoever and um, not suffered any ill effects uh, with it. Um, but uh, I thought for the sake of 3.5 grams, might as well put a ballon in there. So basically, uh, I don't know how much uh, with all of it, including the uh, the wire and the RG174. Uh, I'm not sure what the total weight would be, but uh, I'll have to. Uh, I'll put that up on the uh, up on the video uh, of the uh, antenna and the feeder. Um, but uh, basically, when you're looking at look at this, oh, and obviously I was using a pole there, um, but um, I could use my Sota Beams Carbon Six pole, uh, which is uh, pretty lightweight. Um, but uh, the intention is to uh, try and use this by sort of uh, just chucking a, some cord up into a uh, into a tree and use it sort of like fairly low slung down to the ground. Um, so uh, in theory, that should be the complete station here: the true SDX, the uh, the batteries, and uh, and the um, uh, and the antenna. And I'm actually uh, these batteries are a kind of nominal voltage of 3.7 volts but the three of them together uh, I'm getting uh, about just under 12.4 uh, volts out of it so uh, ideal really for uh, for running the uh, the true SDX and also um, previously I've messed around with uh, using four of these and then uh, just using a little buck converter to uh, to drop the voltage um, but I'm sort of thinking I might be introducing some uh, sort of spurious uh, mush into the uh, into the mix so um, it's just I haven't even got a fuse in there look um, but um, so uh, yeah just running the uh, the three batteries when I purchased the whisper light um, I'm not quite sure how I've done it because it's quite a while back now um, but uh, one way or another you can establish a, a kind of a link and uh, tie it into your call sign and then uh, to the uh, web page, a D-Explorer um, web page by Sota Beams, and you can obviously see what your spots are on, on the uh, on that page. So what I'll do is I'll put the link, uh, my link, in the uh, video description, but it will only last on here for th 30 days. So today I think is the 5th of April. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, you can actually uh, you'll be able to see. If you're watching it within the last 30 days, you'll be able to see my spots. But basically, you get this sort of menu comes up, and then um, you can um, put like the DX10 group table, uh, and I'll take some screenshots of this. So this will give you the uh, 10 most distant uh, spots that you've had. So the most distant one here is the Delta Popper Lima, Popper Oscar Lima, which is uh, 2,995 kilometers, and that's been spotted twice. Uh, there's a Tango Alpha, uh, Tango Alpha 4 stroke uh, Golf 8 Sierra Charlie uniform uh, in Turkey. Um, it's obviously a Brit uh, on holiday there by the looks of it, possibly. Spotted twice there at 2,957 kilometres. And then five times I've been spotted by Echo Alpha 8 Bravo Foxtrot Kilo. Um, so. Um, it gives you the, the top 10 there and it gives you an average distance uh, in that top 10 of 2117 kilometers but you then tap onto menu and you can go into the spots map and it will give you uh, a map that you can uh, zoom out and each of the uh, each of the the spots that you had you can just click on that tap on it and then it will give you the uh, the distance uh, the signal to noise ratio uh, and the call sign so it's uh, displaying that one there the one there in Turkey but there you go so that's pretty neat but I'm going to disconnect that now and then uh, connect up the uh, the true SDX
Yes, Roger, 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 Roger is correct. Uh, you're five nine, five nine. Your report, Roger. Roger, Roger. Thank you. Uh, for the five nine report. You're five nine seven, fifty six to fifty seven. My name's Johan. Julian Ocean. Uh, for Norway, location Tania, Barcelona. How is my audio? Just uh, quickly, is my audio okay, Roger? Okay, thanks very much. 7 3, uh, enjoy your weekend. Bye bye. <laughs> it worked. That. That sounds awful, this end. Obviously, it would benefit from a um, from an external speaker. Let me turn it down. Uh, I don't know if it's anything that uh, that I need to do. But that that doesn't sound very great. It's, uh, I know it probably sounds even worse to you because uh, I've only got the onboard microphone on the uh, uh, on the uh, camera here. But he said that my audio sounded nice and clear, so <laughs> I'm astounded at that. I've, uh, I've had this quite a while actually, um, but that's the first contact I've actually had on it. So. Well. I'm quite happy that I've uh, actually had the contact uh, on that, but that speaker, um, I keep a, a little box of tricks out here, and I've got just a sort of old cheap pair of uh, headphones, and uh, it's so much better. Uh, that speaker, which is tiny, so you know you've got to have, your expectations have got to be realistic, but that does sound awful. I'm actually hearing a Victor Kilo three there. Victor Kilo 3 Echo Kilo is uh, calling him, but he's obviously not hearing him. I think uh, all things considered, I think the FX4CR is a much more a much more a much more pleasant user experience, shall we say, than the uh, uh, than the true SDX. Um, but anyway, a nice uh, contact there with uh, Gordon GX3, sorry G3 PXT Mobile, who was. Uh, on his way to Clacton, which is uh, just up the uh, just up the road there. If I look out the window in that direction, kind of north of here. Well, I think that'll do for now. It's just about low tide at the moment, and uh, it's, well, it always sounds windier in the shed than it does uh, outside. Just to take you outside sounds a lot worse the winds coming this kind of a northeasterly wind so coming from this direction here but uh, it's low tide now but it would um if it were a high tide particularly if it was a, a kind of a spring tide then the uh it would be uh, quite choppy out there but uh, because of the uh, wind direction northeasterly and the fact that there's uh, the, it's low water, let me get out the wind, the fact that it's uh, kind of low tide, it, uh, it hasn't really got the expanse of water to whip up too much. So you can see the mud bank there that, uh, on the way over. I tried to uh, sort of cut over the top of that and it was getting quite shallow. So I had to back off a little bit because uh, you don't want to get stuck on that on a falling tide. Okay, that's it. Have a little look around, make sure I haven't left anything. Sun is shining. <laughs>